Well, howdy folks. This video is in response to a bunch of PMs I've been getting asking for information about this. This is the OBD2 cable that connects to the RSV4 and 210 ECUs. So it's just the same as an automotive OBD cable. What we do is add this little adapter which I ordered from AF1 thanks to those good folks again for their good service not that I'm affiliated with them but they just do provide some good service and as a test as an example I've unplugged the sensor here just to show what signal it generates and what it looks like on the dashboard so this is the connector as you can see I've already made mine nice and easy to reach it's the only cable in the tail of the RSV4 that had this little plug or cap attached to the plug. So I just leave mine there so that if I need to, I can quickly and easily connect this to the diagnostic cable without having to pull the tail section off. Your methods may vary. So let's take a look. Take the cap off. We connect the cable here. It's a little tight actually, usually. Here we go. Now the ignition's off. I plug in. And the power cable just needs the positive. It's already grounded here. There we go. So we can see that the chip has power. And I will open up the software. Now this software is free, although I use it so much I actually did send the author $50 just recently because I find it incredibly valuable. Okay, Guzzi Diag. I'll add a link to this in the description. Same with the OBD2 cable and the plug converter. Now I might just do a screen grab of this later, but for now we'll see if this works okay. If I can capture the screen it might look better this way. Okay, so there's the software. Firstly, let's take a look at the preferences. English, straightforward. COM3 is my only choice. And this selection here is critical. To do it for the RSV4, you have to select the California 1400 because it runs the same ECU, which, yeah, is right there. That's this ECU I've selected. California 1400 and debug not necessary debug logging I don't think we need that actually and comma separated values is not necessary either not for this what I would love to do is get a little pocket PC and mount it in the tail and then log values while I'm on the track uh, Tau Calbisa I think was mentioning some some possibilities with that one of these days I'll look into it. Okay, so for now we will connect. Switch on the ignition. And let's take a look. Hope that's framed. Okay, so you can see that the service message is on, so the ECU knows that there's something wrong. Let's take a look. Okie dokie. And waiting to connect. There it goes. Okay, it's connected. We've now got a connection to the ECU. What we, what we want to do is look at the codes, the faults. So I'll clear anything that's there. Clear, clear, clear. Okay, now I'll read, and there we go. No signal. There's thousands of DTCs, or Diagnostic Trouble Codes, on Google or online. So if I was to just do a search on that, I'm sure it would come up and tell me that the GPS sensor is not connected. Uh, not the GPS, the uh, inertial sensor is not connected. So they're easy to find. Uh, the last time I used this, I had another service message pop up unexpectedly, and it turned out that uh, the coil for cylinder number three uh, had disconnected so it wasn't disconnected there was a pin that wasn't quite fully seated 
So thanks to the CAN bus error messages, I was able to just look it up on Google. It said <laughs> cylinder number three coil, no, no signal. So I just looked at it, found the problem, fixed it, cleared the error, and we were all good. And that saved me a trip to the dealership. So just as a example, these are all of the values that Guzzi Diag can log. And these are very useful. RPM, air temperature, engine temperature, uh, throttle position, and that one there is very useful. The status of the handlebar. You can actually do the handlebar learning procedure with this. I've never done it, but I've, I'm told it's very simple. Throttle position, ignition correction, air pressure, front and rear. There's a bunch of unknowns as well, but uh, some very useful ones. Ignition advance, injection period I think is fascinating. When the engine's running you can see how long each, in, uh, each individual fuel injector is open. And a whole bunch of really fun values displayed here as well as a bunch that are unknown, as you can see. Uh, let's see, limp home mode, that would be a pain. Engine, sp uh, uh, vehicle speed, very useful. Engine status, throttle, uh, gear position, fan switch, on or off, side stand, kill switch, clutch, a lot of interesting stuff. Now this is what I would love to log. Traction control on or off. Front wheel speed, because that's going to dictate the wheelie uh, function. Quick shifter. And then there is the traction control setting that's so critical. Rear wheel circumference. That is what you're setting every time you recalibrate uh, your traction control. Final gear ratio and a bunch more unknowns. So anyway, we can log all of those and we can also fix the codes. So, let's see. Oh, and actually I meant to check this. I can turn on the fuel pump here. I can uh, trigger the ignition rev counter. There's the handle self-learning. But uh, I was thinking what I need to do is hook up a separate fuel pump connection so I can get the gas out of the tank at the end of the season instead of having to tip it upside down and shaking it and making a mess. So I'm going to do that at some point. Anyway, that's what we need to see for now. Faults. And it's still there. So let's see. What we'll do is we will disconnect. Ignition off, and I'll reconnect the plug. There, that's in. Now we will reconnect. Now it's connected. Will the error message come back up? Yes, it does. So the code is still in the ECU. Connect first. Has it connected? Okay, view faults. Read them, take a look, clear it. There we go. Now, there it is, it's clear. That's it. That's all it takes. The error was fixed, the fault is cleared. And we're done. So we can disconnect. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I called a local Aprilia dealership, and they said to do that, provided the error was simple, would be between five and eight hundred dollars per visit. So, yeah, I'm not in a huge hurry to pay that much for a job that's this simple. Maybe they were quoting high just to avoid 
giving a customer bad news when they find out that it was a really complex problem to fix. But still, this laptop didn't cost that much. Certainly the cables didn't. Anyway, so that's it. That's all it takes. I'll put links to all the equipment that is needed, the cables and the connector and the software in the description. And as always, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments or just send me a PM. I will get to every single one of them. So thanks for watching. And if you have any other ideas for videos you'd like to see, please let me know. Um, coming up, I'm actually going to be doing some modifications to the brake system. I just got the tools needed to make some custom brake lines for uh, quick release connectors for the front calipers. So that's going to be fun. And yes, I am still planning on getting the dimensions for the top cylinder head to make a new cam tool, or ca uh, cam sprocket removal tool or holder tool. So yes, that is in the works. It's just that my CNC machine is down for the count. Uh, so I will be doing that someday, someday soon. Okay, that's all for now. Stay tuned and I'll catch you later.